Hello, I'm Falcia. Welcome to another recording of the Thonbo Coolnia, the Cattle Raid of Cooley, with myself, Laura O'Brien. This one's a bit of an epic one, so I'm going to do as much as I can. I'll see if I can get all the way through, but it really, really is a long one. It is. Let me just share my screen. If you are new to this, then please, please, please go back and watch all of the other episodes up until now because we are on episode 20 which is the combat of Ferdia and Cuchulain and I can see why you might have landed here fresh you know but there really is there's a link down below and you'll see the setup um, on the blog and the introduction and all that good stuff and then you can watch through episode by episode because it really is an epic tale and it's been a bit of a labor of love for me to record all the way through it so that is what we are continuing today. Episode 20, The Combat of Ferdia and Cúchulain. Then the men of Erin took counsel who would be fit to send to the ford to fight and do battle with Cúchulain, to drive him off from them at the morning early on the morrow. With one accord they declared that it should be Ferdia, <laughs> Ferdia son of Damon, son of Dara, the great and valiant warrior of the men of Dornon. And fitting it was for him to go thither, for well matched and alike was their manner of fight and of combat. Under the same instructresses, they had done skillful deeds of valour and arms, when learning the art with Skahok, the modest, and with Uahok, the dreadful, and with Aoife, the handsome. And neither of them overmatched the other, save in the feet of the gay Bolga, the barbed spear which Cuchulain possessed. Spoiler alert. Howbeit against this, Ferdia was horn skinned when fighting and in combat with a warrior on the ford. Then were messengers and envoys sent to Ferdia, and Ferdia denied them their will, and sent back the messengers, and he went not with them, for he knew wherefore they would have him to fight and combat with his friend, with his comrade and foster brother Cuchulain. Then did Maeve dispatch the druids and the poets of the camp, the lampoonists and hard attackers for Ferdia to the end that they might make three satires to stay him and three scoffing speeches against him, that they might raise three blisters on his face, blame, blemish and disgrace, if he came not with them. I knew there was a reference to specifically raising three blisters on the face from the satire. And I've just remembered where it is. <laughs> it came up during our introduction to Rosk poetry with uh, Jer over at the Irish Pagan School, uh, which is a great class if you're interested in all that, um, the dispatching of the druids and the poets of the camp, the lampoonists and hard attackers. If you want to be a hard attacker in ancient Irish Rosk form poetry, then uh, you could definitely do worse than taking Geraldine's class over at the Irish Pagan School. That's Rosk or O-S-C. So um, I'm actually delighted because I had completely forgotten where that reference was. I knew I'd read it, but could not remember where it was. So Ferdia came with them for the sake of his own honour, for as much as he deemed it better to fall by the shafts of valour and bravery and skill than to fall by the shafts of satire, abuse and reproach. And when Ferdia was come into the camp, he was honoured and waited on, and choice, well-flavoured, strong liquor was poured out for him till he became drunken and merry. Great rewards were promised him if he would make the fight and combat, namely a chariot worth four times seven bondmaids, and the apparel of two men and ten men, of cloth of every colour, and the equivalent of the plain of Merhevna, of the rich plain of Ai, free of tribute, without duress for his son, for his grandson, or for his great-grandson, till the end of time and existence. So the plain of Merhevna is one of the primary plains in Ulster. And um, the, the rich plain of Ai is actually where Crochon is in Connacht. So that is, that's a lot of wealth and riches um, for generations to come that's being offered to him. Such were the words of Maeve, and she spake them here, and Ferdia responded. Maeve, great rewards in arm rings, share of plain and forest, freedom of thy children from this day till doom. 
Ferdia, son of Daman, more than thou couldst hope for, why shouldst thou refuse it, that which all would take? Ferdia, not I'll take without bond, no ill spearman am I. Hard on me tomorrow, great will be the strife. Hound that's height of Cullen, how his thrust is grievous. No soft thing to stand him, rude will be the wound. Nay, champions will be surety, thou needst not keep hostings. Reins and splendid horses shall be given as pledge. Ferdia, good of battle, for that thou art dauntless, thou shalt be my lover, past all free of Cain. Ferdia, without bond I'll go not to engage in ford feats. It will live till doomsday in full strength and force. Ne'er I'll yield, who hears me, whoe'er counts upon me, without sun and moon oath, without sea and land. That's interesting, sun and moon oath and sea and land. So that would be a reference to the cosmology of the old Irish, uh, the pre-Christian culture, I believe. Um, the idea of uh, earth, sea and sky and swearing oaths by the earth, the sea and sky. But instead of the, the sky there, it's sea, land and sun and moon specifically pulled out uh, of the sky to be sworn upon. Um, there's more on that in our Practical Guide to Irish Spirituality class on the Irish Pagan School, if anybody is interested in that. So anyway, Maeve, why then dost delay it? Bind as it please thee, by king's hands and princes, who will stand for thee. Lo, I will repay thee, thou shalt have thine asking, for I know thou'lt slaughter man that meeteth thee. So talking about Cuchulain there, obviously. Ferdia. Nay, without six sureties, it shall not be fewer. Ere I do my exploits, there where hosts will be. Should my will be granted, I swear, though unequal, that I'll meet in combat Cuchulain the Brave. Maeve. Donal then, or Carbra, Neven famed for slaughter, or e'en folk of barddom, Nathalus thou shalt have. Bind thyself on Morin, wouldst thou its fulfilment, bind on smooth man's Carbra, and our two sons bind. Um, that I believe, certainly bind thyself on Morin is a reference to, there's, um, there's a story called the Twelve Ordeals, or how Cormac got his sword, and it references um, various ways of uh, discerning truth, but also swearing oaths. And um, there is Morin's ads and Morin's collar, and maybe a third thing belonging to Morin, I believe. And Morin would be, um, I think, an old Brehan, so a judge who would be giving judgments. And these were um, magical items or implements that, um, that would represent that power of judgment and truth telling. And Carbra is a druid as well, I believe. I'm not hundred percent sure and I don't I don't recognize well I, I recognize the names but I don't know who they're in reference to. Um to the other ones. And our two sons bind would be um Maeve's son, one of Maeve's sons and one of Ferdia's sons would be bound together as foster brothers, probably, is, is what that's a reference to. So Ferdia, uh, Maeve with wealth of cunning, whom no spouse can bridle, thou it is that herdest Cruachan of the mounds. Um, high thy fame and wild power, mine the fine pied satin, give thy gold and silver which were preferred me. Maeve. To thee, foremost champion, I will give my ringed brooch from this day till Sunday shall thy respite be. Warrior, mighty, famous, all the earth's fair treasures shall to thee be given, everything be thine. 
Finnevar of the Champions, Queen of Western Erin, when thou slain the smith's hound, Ferdia, she's thine. So that's uh, Maeve offering her daughter, Finnevar, who gets offered around quite significantly during the Tawn as this, um, this prize. But it's interesting that she's referred to the queen, as the Queen of Western Erin. So the Queen of Connacht. Um, she obviously comes, uh, she is Maeve's successor. Then said they, one and all, those gifts were great. Tis true, they are great. But though they are, said Ferdia, with Maeve myself, I will leave them. And I will not accept them if it be to do battle or combat with my foster brother, the man of my alliance and affection and my equal in skill of arms, namely with Cúchulain. And he said, greatest toil this, greatest toil, battle with the hound of gore. Liefer would I battle twice with 200 men of fall. So I would prefer to, I think is what that means. Sad the fight and sad the fight, I and hound of feats shall wage. We shall hack both flesh and blood, skin and body we shall hew. Sad, O oh God, yea, sad, O oh God, that a woman should us part. My heart's half, the blameless hound, half the brave hound's heart am I. And this, friends and followers, is where we start getting into um, the theory that Ferdia and Cúchulain are closer than brothers. And uh, we're, um, we're having a bit of a bromance. By my shield, oh by my shield, if Achlea's brave hound shall fall, I would drive my slender glaive through my heart, my side, my breast. I mean, we're really getting into the love poetry here. By my sword, oh by my sword, if the hound of Glen Bollock fall, no man after him I'll slay, till I o'er the, o'er the world's brink spring. By my hand, oh by my hand, falls the hound of Glen in Shkial. Maeve with all her host I'll kill, and then no more men of fall. By my spear, oh by my spear, should Achro's brave hound be slain. I'll be buried in his grave, may one grave hide me and him. Tell him this, O oh, tell him this, to the hound of beauteous hue. Fearless Gahak hath foretold my fall on a ford through him. Woe to Maeve, yea, woe to Maeve, who hath used her guile on us. She hath set me face to face against Cúchulain hard the toil. I'm not sure she used her guile. I mean, she was pretty straightforward about it. Um... In fairness, though, like if you had heard, uh, say, Emer uh, decrying this this poetry, and uh, maybe not the spear bit, but um, you would definitely um, you would be forgiven. Emer is the one who uh, Cuchulain was actually married to. So, ye men spake Maeve in the wanted fashion of stirring up disunion and dissension. True is the word Cúchulain speaks. What word is that? asked Ferdia. He said then, replied Maeve, he would not think it too much if thou shouldst fall by his hands in the choicest feet of his skill in arms, in the land whereto he should come. It was not just for him to speak so, quoth Ferdia, for it is not cowardice or lack of boldness that he hath ever seen in me. And I swear by my arms of valour, if it be true that he spoke so, I will be the first man of the men of Aaron to contend with him on the morrow. A blessing of victory upon thee for that, said Maeve. It pleaseth me more than for thee to show fear and lack of boldness. For every man loves his own land, and how is it better for him to seek the welfare of Ulster than for thee to seek the welfare of Connacht? So Maeve here is playing on his pride, definitely. Um, not sure it's completely fair in the wanted fashion of stirring up disunion and dissension. She is definitely playing him to get what she wants or rather what she needs because Cúchulain is a bit of a fly in the ointment at this point, um, let's just say. And if it was any general sending their, their men out to die, um, I think that they would be treated quite differently than, than Maeve is treated. Um, 
and portrayed definitely in parts of this but um but yeah i mean she's definitely um stirring up disunion and dissension here to what end though right so she's also pointing out quite fairly that uh Cucullin is seeking the welfare of ulster but ferdia and all of the exiles of ulster have sought connacht for their safety for their security for their hospitality and there's a couple of them now have really kind of turned around and shit on that to be honest so um Maeve is reminding him and them that uh, they should be wanting to seek the welfare of Connacht for that is their home now that is the home that has taken them in then it was that Maeve obtained from Ferdia the easy surety of covenant to fight and contend on the morrow with six warriors of the champions of Erin, or to fight and contend with Cúchulain alone, if to him this last seemed lighter. Ferdia obtained of Maeve the easy surety, as he thought, to send the aforesaid six men for the fulfilment of the terms which had been promised him, should Cúchulain fall at his hands. Then were Fergus's horses fetched for him, and his chariot was yoked, and he came forward to the place of combat where Cúchulain was, to inform him of the challenge. Cúchulain bade him welcome. Welcome is thy coming, O my master Fergus, cried Cúchulain. Truly intended, methinks, the welcome, O fosterling, said Fergus, but it is for this I am here, to inform thee who comes to fight and contend with thee at the morning hour early on the morrow. E'en so we will hear it from thee, said Cúchulain, thine own friend and comrade and foster brother, the man thine equal in feats and in skill of arms and in deeds, Ferdia, son of Damon, son of Dara, the great and mighty warrior of the men of Domnan. As my soul liveth, replied Cúchulain, it is not an encounter we wish our friend to come. It is... It is not to an encounter we wish our friend to come. It is even for that, answered Fergus, thou shouldst be on thy guard and prepared. For unlike all to whom it fell to fight and contend with thee on the Coolnia cattle raid, on this occasion is Ferdia, son of Dalman, son of Dara. Truly I am here, said Cúchulain, checking and staying four of the five grand provinces of Erin from multitude. And methinks just as little will I turn foot in flight before him. So spake Fergus, putting him on his guard, and he said these words to Cúchulain. And he said these words, and Cúchulain responded. So this is uh, Fergus and Cúchulain poetry. Fergus, O Cúchulain, splendid deed, lo, tis time for thee to rise. Here in rage against thee comes Ferdia, red-faced Damon's son, Cúchulain. Here I am, no easy task, holding Aaron's men at bay. Foot I've never turned in flight, in my fight with single foe. Fergus. Dower the man when anger moves, owning to, owing to his gore red glaive. Ferdia wears a skin of horn, against which fight or nor might prevails. Cuchulain. Be thou still, urge not thy tale. Fergus of the mighty arms, on no land and on no ground, for me is there aught defeat. Fergus, fierce the man with scores of deeds, no light thing him to subdue. Strong as hundreds, brave his mien, point pricks not, edge cuts him not. So Ferdia has some kind of uh, horn armour that uh, Fergus is warning Cucullin about or reminding, maybe, because Cúchulain is probably already aware of it. Cúchulain, if we clash upon the ford, I and Ferdia of known skill, will not part without, we know, fierce will be our weapon fight. Fergus, more I'd wish it than reward, O Cúchulain of Red Sword, should thou shouldst be the one to bring eastward haughty Ferdia's spoils. Cúchulain, now I give my word and vow, though unskilled in strife of words, it is I will conquer this son of Daman Machdara. Fergus, it is I brought east the host, thus requiting Ulster's wrong. With me came they from their lands, 
with their heroes and their chiefs. Cuchulain. Were not Concor in the pains, hard twould be to come near us, never Maeve of Mach in Schgal, on more tearful march had come. Uh, the pains there is the reference to the pains of childbirth that the men of Ulster were cursed with by Macha, just to kind of remind you of all that. So when Maeve was able to march into Ulster, it was only Cuchulain who was available because he was not affected by that curse for reasons. Fergus, greatest deed awaits thy hand, fight with Ferdia, Damon's son, hard stern arms with stubborn edge, shalt thou have thou Cullen's hound. After that, Fergus returned to the camp and halting place. As for Ferdia, he betook himself to his tent and to his people, and imparted to them the easy surety with which Maeve had obtained from him to do combat and battle with six warriors on the morrow, or to do combat and battle with Cuchulain alone, if he thought it a lighter task. He made known to them also the fair terms he had obtained from Maeve of sending the same six warriors for the fulfilment of the covenant she had made with him, should Cuchulain fall by his hands. The folk of Ferdia were not joyful, blithe, cheerful, or merry that night, but they were sad, sorrowful, and downcast, for they knew that there they knew that where the two champions and the two bulwarks in a gap for a hundred met in combat, one or other of them would fall there, or both would fall, and if it should be one of them, they believed it would be their king and their own lord that will fall there, for it was not easy to contend and do battle with Cuchulain on the raid for the kind of Cúlnia. Let me just check still have a bit to go. I'll keep going. Raid on the kind of Cunha. Where were we? Ferdia slept right heavily the first part of the night, but when the end of the night was come, his sleep and his heaviness left him, and the anxiousness of the combat and the battle came upon him. And he charged his charioteer to take his horses and to yoke his chariot. Charioteer sought to dissuade him from that journey. By our words, said the Gilla, "'twould be better for thee to remain than to go thither," said he. And in this manner he spake, and he uttered these words, and the henchman responded. Ferdia. Let's haste to the encounter to battle with this man, the ford we will come to, or which Bive will shriek. To meet with Cuchulain, to wound his slight body, to thrust the spear through him so that he may die. The henchman. To say it were better, your threats are not gentle. Death's sickness will one have, and sad will ye part. To meet Ulster's noblest, to meet whence ill cometh. Long will men speak of it, alas for your course. Ferdia. Not fair what thou speakest, no fear hath the warrior. We owe no one meekness, we stay not for thee. Hush, Gilla, about us, the time will bring strong hearts. More meet strength than weakness, let's on to the tryst. So Ferdy is, Ferdy is psyched. That's basically what's going on here. Ferdia's horses were now brought forth and his chariot was hitched and he set out from the camp for the ford of battle when yet day with its full light had not come there for him. Come Gilla, said Ferdia, spread for me the cushions and skins of my chariot under me here. A Gilla is a, is a servant or a slave, by the way. Um, so that I sleep off my heavy fit of sleep and slumber here, for I slept not the last part of the night with the anxiousness of the battle and combat. The Gilla unharnessed the horses, he unfastened the chariot under him, he slept off the heavy fit of sleep that was on him. Now how Cuchulain fared is related here. He arose not till the day with its bright light had come to him, lest the men of Aaron might say it was fear or fright of the champion he had, if he should arise early. And when day with its full light had come, he passed his hand over his face and bade his charioteer take his horses and yoke them to his chariot. Come, Gilla, said Cuchulain, 
Take out our horses for us and harness our chariot, for an early riser is the warrior appointed to meet us, Ferdius, son of Damon, son of Dara. The horses are taken out, said the Gela. The chariot is harnessed. Mount and be it no shame to thy valour to go hither, thither. Then it was that the cutting, feet performing, battle winning, red sworded hero, Cucullan, son of Sultum, mounted his chariot so that there shrieked around him the goblins and fiends and sprites of the glens and the demons of the air. For the Tuatha Danann, the folk of the goddess Danu, were wont to set up their cries around him to the end that the dread and the fear and the fright and the terror of him might be so much the greater in every battle and on every field, in every fight and in every combat wherein he went. So that is the, um, the Genity Glina and all that. We've come the Bachanach, um, the Bonanik and uh, the demons of the air, Damna Air. And we, we've come across those before around Cúchulainn and around battles generally. Um, but uh, this idea that the two of uh, this is the, the, the tribe rather than specific named gods, of which Lu is one and Lu has, has definitely appeared already. Um, and of course, the Bive and Namorina, generally the, the Morrigan and her sisters um, would also be among the two of So, in this case, it is referring specifically to um, other world creatures, I believe, or other world beings or entities, as well as the specific named creatures, the goblins and fiends and sprites of the glens and the demons of the air. So there is a distinction between those kind of other world creatures and the Tuatha Danann. And the Tuatha Danann are more about, um, although actually that could be saying it could be read that they are the two of the Danon, which is interesting. Um, so it seems to be kind of a shorthand for other world entities generally. Anyway, um, not long had Ferdia's charioteer waited when he heard something, a rush and a crash and a hurtling sound and a din and a thunder and a clatter and a clash, namely the shield cry of feet shields and the jangle of javelins, and the deed striking of, of swords, and the thud of the helmet, and the ring of spears, and the striking of arms, the fury of feet, the straining of ropes, and the whir of wheels, and the creaking of the chariot, and the trampling of the horse's hooves, and the deep voice of the hero and battle warrior on his way to the ford to attack his opponent. That's all very dramatic, isn't it? You can really see where a storyteller, Shana Key, would be uh, working themselves up and working their audience up through a piece like that. The servant came and touched his master with his hand. Ferdia, master, said the youth, rise up. They are here to meet thee at the ford. And the gilla spake these words. The roll of a chariot, its fair yoke of silver, a man great and stalwart, or tops the strong car, or Bri Ross, or Brane, their swift path they hasten, past old tree towns, tree stump, victorious they speed. A sly hound that driveth, a fair chief that urgeth, a free hawk that speedeth, his steed towards the south. Gore coloured the Kua, tis sure he will take us, we know, vain to hide it, he brings us to feet. Woe him on the hillock, the brave hound before him. Last year I foretold it, that sometime he'd come. Hound from Aon Maka, hound formed of all colours. The border hound, war hound, I hear what I've heard. Come, Gela, said Ferdia, for what reason laudest thou this man ever since I am come from my house? It is almost a cause for strife with thee, that thou hast praised him thus highly. But Alil and Maeve have prophesied to me that this man will fall by my hand. And since it is for a reward, he shall quickly be torn asunder for, by me. But it is time to fetch help. And he spake these words and the henchman responded, Ferdia, 
Tis time now to help me. Be silent. Cease praising. Twas no deed of friendship, no doom o'er the brink. The champion of Coolnia, thou seest midst proud feats. For that it's for Gurdon shall quickly be slain. The henchman. I see Coolnia's hero with feats overweening. Not fleeing he flees us, but towards us he comes. He runneth not slowly, though cunning, not sparing, like water down high cliff or thunderbolt quick. Tis cause of a quarrel, so much thou hast praised him. And why hast thou chose him, since I am from home? And now they extol him, they fall to proclaim him, none come to attack him but soft, simple men. Here followeth the description of Cúchulain's chariot, one of the three chief chariots of the tale of the foray of Cúlnia. It was not long that Ferdia's charioteer remained there when he saw something. A beautiful five-pointed chariot, approaching with swiftness, with speed, with perfect skill, with a green shade, with a thin-framed, dry-bodied box, surmounted with feats of cunning, straight pulled as long as a warrior's sword. On this was room for a hero's seven arms, the fair seat for its lord, behind two flat fleet steeds, large-eared, gaily prancing, with inflated nostrils, broad-chested, quick-hearted, high-flanked, broad-hoofed, slender-limbed, overpowering and resolute. A grey, broad-hipped, small-stepping, long-maned horse was under one of the yokes of the chariot. A black, crisp-maned, swift-moving, broad-backed horse under the other. Like unto a hawk after its prey on a sharp, tempestuous day, or to a tearing blast of wind of spring on a March day over the back of a plain, or unto a startled stag when first roused by the hounds in the first of the chase, where Cucullin's two horses before the chariot, as if they were on glowing fiery flags, so that they shook the earth and made it tremble with the fleetness of their course. And Cucullin reached the ford. Ferdy awaited on the south side of the ford. Cucullin stood on the north side. Ferdy bade welcome to Cucullin. Welcome is thy coming, O Cucullin, said Ferdy. Truly spoken, me seemed thy welcome till now, answered Cucullin, but today I put no more trust in it. And O Ferdy, said Cucullin, it were fitter for me to bid thee welcome than that thou shouldst welcome me. For it is thou that art come to the land and province wherein I dwell, and it is not fitting for thee to come to contend and do battle with me. But it were fitter for me to go to contend and do battle with thee. For before thee in flight are my women and my boys and my youths, my steeds and my troops of horses, my drove, my flocks and my herds of cattle. Good, O Cuchulain, spake Ferdia, what hast thou ever brought, what hast ever brought thee out to contend and do battle with me? For when we were together with Skahok and with Uachok and with Aoife, thou wast my serving man, even for arming my spear and dressing my bed. That was indeed true, answered Cuchulain, because of my youth and my littleness did I so much for thee. But this is by no means my mood this day. For there is not a warrior in the world I would not drive off this day. To see how much is left. Still quite a bit. This is a long one. Okay. Going to keep going for another while. I need to split this into three parts. Mm. And then it was that each of them cast sharp cutting reproaches at the other, renouncing his friendship. And Ferdia spake these words there, and Cúchulain responded. Ferdia, what led thee, O Cúa, to fight a strong champion? Thy flesh will be gore red or smoke of thy steeds. Alas for thy journey, a kindling of firebrands, in sore need of healing, if home thou shouldst reach. Cúchulain. 
I'm come before warriors around the herd's wild boar, before troops and hundreds to drown thee in deep, in anger to prove thee, in hundredfold battle, till on thee come havoc, defending thy head. Ferdia, here stands one to crush thee, tis I will destroy thee. There's a missing line there. From me there shall come the flight of their warriors in presence of Ulster, that long they'll remember the loss that was theirs. Cuchulain, how then shall we combat for wrongs? Shall we heave sighs? Despite all, we'll go there to fight on the ford. Or is it with hard swords, or e'en with red spear points, before hosts to slay thee, if thy hour hath come? Ferdia. Before, before sunset, for nightfall, if need be, then guard thee. I'll fight thee at Barche, not bloodlessly fight. The Ulster men call thee. He has him, O oh, hearken. The sight will distress them, that through them will pass. Cuchulain. In danger's gap fallen, at hand is thy life's term. On thee plied be weapons, not gentle the skill. One champion will slay thee, we both will encounter. No more shalt lead forays from this day till doom. Ferdia. Avaunt with thy warnings, thou world's greatest braggart. Nor guerdon, nor pardon, low warrior for thee. Tis I that well know thee, thou heart of a cageling. This lad merely tickles without skill or force. This is the smack talk part of the encounter, obviously. Cuchulain, when we were with Skahuk for wanted arms training, Together we'd fare forth to seek every fight. Thou wast my heart's comrade, my clan and my kinsman. Ne'er found I one dearer, thy loss would be sad. Ferdia. Thou wagest thine honour unless we do battle, before the cock croweth thy head on a spit. Cuchulain of Coolnia, mad frenzy hath seized thee. All ill will wreak on thee, for thine is the sin. Come now, O Ferdia, cried Cuchulain. Not meet was it for thee to come to contend and do battle with me, because of the instigation and intermeddling of Alil and Maid. And all that come because of those promises of deceit, neither profit nor success did it bring them, and they have fallen by me. And none the more, Ferdia, shall it win victory or increase the fame for thee, and shalt thou too fall by my hand. Thus he spake, and he further uttered these words, and Ferdia hearkened to him. Come not nigh me, noble chief, Ferdia, comrade, Daman's son. Worse for thee than tis for me, thou'lt bring sorrow to a host. Come not nigh me against all right, thy last bed is made by me. Why shouldst thou alone escape from the prowess of my arms? Shall not great feats thee undo, though thou art purple, horny skinned, and the maid thou boastest of shall not, damn son, be thine. Finnevar, Maeve's daughter fair, great her charms, though they may be, fair as is the damsel's form, she's not... She's for thee not to enjoy. Finnever, the king's own child, is the lure, if truth be told. Many they whom she's deceived, and undone as she has thee. Break not, wheatless oat with me, oath with me. Break not friendship, break not bond. Break not promise, break not word. Come not nigh me, noble chief. Fifty chiefs obtained in plight, this same maid a proffer vain. Through me went they to their graves, spear right all they had for me. Though for brave was held for Baeth, with whom was a warrior's train, in short space I quelled his rage, him I slew with one sole blow. Shrub Dara sore sank his might, darling of the noblest dames, time there was when great his fame, 
gold nor raiment saved his knot. Were she mine, a fianced wife, smile on me this fair land's head. I would not thy body hurt, right nor left, in front, behind. Good, O Ferdia, cried Cucullin, it is not right for thee to fight and combat with me. For when we were with Skahak and with Uahak and with Aoife, and it was together we were used to seek out every battle and every battlefield, every combat and every contest, every wood and every desert, every covert and every recess. And thus he spake and he uttered these words. Cucullin, we were heart companions once. We were comrades in the woods. We were men that shared a bed when they slept the heavy sleep. After hard and weary fights, into many lands so strange, side by side we sallied forth, and we ranged the woodlands through, when with Skahok we learned arms. Is that a reference to them being lovers? We don't know, but it's certainly, certainly read as such by some. Ferdia, O Cucullin, rich in feats, hard the trade we both have learned. Treason hath o'ercome our love. Thy first wounding hath been bought. Think not of our friendship more, Kua, it avails thee not. Okay, I'm going to leave that one there for now. That is a good long video. And um, we will finish up there and come back to it in the next episode, which will be 20... B. I'll call this one 20A and we'll come back to it in 20B. Okay, so make sure that you catch the rest. There'll be a playlist popping up um, if you want to go back and if you sign up to the mailing list I do um, roundup posts every so often so uh, you can catch that on lauraobrien.ie or the irishpaganschool.com. So slongafol and I will see you in the next video.